What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Smarter? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. And maybe you can have me at your next event. And if you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to check out my other podcast, What Makes You Famous. Find it everywhere using the hashtag What Makes You Famous. What Makes You Smarter? And learn with me right here on the program. Now, on with the show. Today on the program, the Florida Keys, one of my personal favorite places to be. That's where the name Keys Dan is derivative of. I lived in the Florida Keys from 1988 until 2009, the middle of 2009. That's when I moved to central Arkansas. Yes, and from time to time, I do miss the Florida Keys. So let's talk about it a little bit right here on the program. The Florida Keys are a Coral K archipelago located off the southern coast of Florida, forming the southernmost part of the continental United States. They begin at the southeastern coast of the Florida Peninsula, about 15 miles south of Miami, and extend in a gentle arc southwest and then westward to Key West, the westernmost of the inhabited islands and on to the uninhabited Dry Tortugas. The islands lie along the Florida Straits, dividing the Atlantic Ocean to the east from the Gulf of Mexico to the northwest, and defining one edge of Florida Bay. At the nearest point, the southern part of Key West is just 90 miles, or 140 kilometers, from Cuba. The Florida Keys are between 24.3 and 25.5 degrees north latitude. More than 95% of the land area lies in Monroe County, but a small portion extends northeast into Miami Dade County, such as Totten Key. The total land area is 137.3 square miles, or 356 kilometers squared. As of the 2010 census, the population was 73,090 people with an average density of 532.34 per square mile, although much of the population is concentrated in a few areas of much higher density, such as the city of Key West, which has 32% of the entire population of the Keys. The U.S. Census population estimate for 2014 is 77,000. 136 residents. The city of Key West is the county seat of Monroe County. The county consists of a section on the mainland, which is almost entirely in Everglades National Park, and the Keys Islands from Key Largo to the Dry Tortugas. The history of the Keys. The Keys were originally inhabited by the Calusa and Tequesta tribes and were charted by Juan Ponce de Leon in 1513. De Leon named the islands Los Matires, the martyrs, as they looked like suffering men from a distance. Key is derived from the Spanish word Cayo, meaning small island. For many years, Key West was the largest town in Florida and it grew prosperous on wrecking revenue. The isolated outpost was well located for trade with Cuba and the Bahamas, and was on the main trade route from New Orleans. Improved navigation led to fewer shipwrecks, and Key West went into a decline in the late 19th century. Let's talk about the Overseas Railway. The Keys were long accessible only by water. This changed with the completion of Henry Flagler's Overseas Railway in the early 1910s. Flagler, a major developer of Florida's Atlantic Coast, extended his Florida East Coast Railway down to Key West with an ambitious series of overseas railroad trestles. Three hurricanes 
disrupted the project in 1906, 1909, and 1910. The 1935 Labor Day hurricane, the strongest hurricane to strike the U.S., made landfall near Ala Mirada in the Upper Keys on Labor Day, Monday, September 2nd. Winds were estimated to have gusted to 200 miles per hour, raising a storm surge more than 17.5 feet above sea level that washed over the islands. More than 400 people were killed, though some estimates place the number of deaths at more than 600. The Labor Day hurricane was one of only four hurricanes to make landfall at Category 5 strength on the U.S. coast since reliable weather records began about 1850. The other storms were Hurricane Camille, 1969, Hurricane Andrew, 1992, and Hurricane Michael, 2018. In 1935, new bridges were under construction to connect a highway through the entire Keys. Hundreds of World War I veterans working on the roadway as part of a government relief program were housed in non-reinforced buildings in three construction camps in the Upper Keys. When the evacuation train failed to reach the camps before the storm, more than 200 veterans perished. Their death of anger and charges of mismanagement that led to a congressional investigation. The storm also ended the 23-year run of the Overseas Railway. The damaged tracks were never rebuilt, and the Overseas Highway, U.S. Highway 1, replaced the railroad as the main transportation route from Miami to Key West. The Seven Mile Bridge One of the longest bridges when it was built, the Seven Mile Bridge connects Knights Key, part of the city of Marathon, in the Middle Keys, to Little Duck Key in the Lower Keys. The piling support concrete bridge is 35,862 feet or 6.79 miles long. The current bridge bypasses Pigeon Key, a small island that housed workers building Henry Flagler's Florida East Coast Railway in the 1900s that the bridge crossed. Crossed a 2.2 mile section of the old bridge remains for access to the island, although it was closed to vehicular traffic on March 4, 2008. The aging structure has been deemed unsafe by the Florida Department of Transportation. Costly repairs, estimated to be as much as $34 million, were expected to begin in July 2008. Monroe County was unable to secure a $17 million loan through the State Infrastructure Bank, delaying work for at least a year. On June 14, 2008, the Old Bridge section leading to Pigeon Key was closed to fishing as well, while still open to pedestrians walking, biking, and jogging. If the bridge were closed altogether, only a ferry subsidized by FDOT and managed by the county would transport visitors to the island. The Overseas Highway After the destruction of the Keys Railway by the Labor Day Hurricane of 1935, the railroad bridges, including the Seven Mile Bridge, were converted to automobile roadways. This roadway, U.S. Highway 1, became the Overseas Highway that runs from Key Largo south to Key West. Today, this unique highway allows travel through the tropical islands of the Florida Keys and view exotic plants and animals found nowhere else on the U.S. mainland and the largest coral reef chain in the United States. Cuban Exiles Following the Cuban Revolution, many Cubans who did not want to live under a socialist government emigrated to South Florida. Key West traditionally had strong links with its neighbor 90 miles south by water and large numbers of Cubans settled there. The Keys still attract Cubans, leaving their home country, and stories of, quote, rafters, end quote, coming ashore are not uncommon. The Conch Republic In 1982, the United States Border Patrol established a roadblock 
and inspection points on U.S. Highway 1, stopping all northbound traffic returning to the mainland at Florida City to search vehicles for illegal drugs and undocumented immigrants. The Key West City Council repeatedly complained about the roadblocks, which were a major inconvenience for travelers and hurt the Key's important tourism industry. After various unsuccessful complaints and attempts to get legal injunction against the blockade failed in federal court in Miami on April 23, 1982, Key West Mayor Dennis Wardlow and the City Council declared the independence of the city of Key West, calling it the Conch Republic. After one minute of secession, he, as Prime Minister, surrendered to an officer of the Key West Naval Air Station and requested $1 billion in foreign aid. The stunt succeeded in generating great publicity for the Key's plight and the inspection station roadblock was removed. The idea of the Conch Republic has provided a new source of revenue for the Keys by way of tourist keepsake sales, and the Conch Republic has participated in later protests. Geology <laughs> The northern and central sections of the Florida Keys are the exposed portions of an ancient coral reef, the Key Zone. The northernmost island arising from the ancient reef formation is Elliott Key in Biscayne National Park. North of Elliott Key are several small transitional keys composed of sand built up around small areas of exposed ancient reef. Further north, Key Biscayne and places north are barrier islands built up of sand. The islands in the southwestern part of the chain, from Big Pine Key to the Marquesas Keys, are exposed area of Miami limestone. The Florida Keys have taken their present form as the result of the drastic changes in sea level associated with recent glaciations or ice ages. Beginning some 130,000 years ago, the San Gamonian stage raised sea levels about 25 feet above the current level. All of southern Florida was covered by a shallow sea. Several parallel lines of reef formed along the edge of the submerged Florida platform, stretching south and then west from the present Miami area to what is now the Dry Tortugas. The reef formed the Key Largo limestone that is exposed on the surface from Soldier Key, midway between Key Biscayne and Elliott Key, to the southeast portion of Big Pine Key and the Newfound Harbor Key. The types of coral that formed Key Largo limestone can be identified on the exposed surface of these keys. Starting about 100,000 years ago, the Wisconsin glaciation began lowering sea levels, exposing the coral reef and surrounding marine sediments. By 15,000 years ago, the sea level had dropped between 300 to 350 feet below the contemporary level. The exposed reefs and sediments were heavily eroded. Acidic water, which can result from decaying vegetation, dissolves limestone. Some of the dissolved limestone redeposited as denser cap rock, which can be seen as outcrops overlying the Key Largo and Miami limestones throughout the Keys. The limestone that eroded from the reef formed oolites in the shallow sea behind the reef, and together with the skeletal remains of bryozoans, formed the Miami limestone that is the current surface bedrock of the lower Florida Peninsula and the lower keys from Big Pine to Key West. To the west of Key West, the ancient reef is covered by recent calcareous sand, while the islands of the upper and middle keys form a long, narrow arc. The islands of the lower keys are perpendicular to the line of that arc. 
This configuration arose from an ancient tidal bar system. The bars lithified or compacted under pressure and with changes in sea levels are presently exposed as the island, while the channels between the bars now separate the islands. Still with you, keep going. Let's talk about the environment. The climate and environment of the Florida Keys are closer to that of the Caribbean than the rest of Florida. Though unlike the Caribbean's volcanic islands, the Keys were built by plants and animals. The Upper Keys Islands are composed of sandy type accumulations of limestone grains produced by plants and marine organisms. The Lower Keys are remnants of large coral reefs, which became fossilized and exposed when the sea level dropped. The natural habitats of the Keys are upland forests, inland wetlands, and shoreline zones. Soil ranges from sand to marl or marlstone to rich decomposed leaf litter. In some places, cap rock, the eroded surface of coral formations, covers the ground. Rain falling through the leaf debris becomes acidic and dissolves holes in the limestone where soil accumulates and trees root. Flora and fauna. Let's go through that. The Florida Keys have distinctive plant and animal species, some found nowhere else in the United States. As the Keys define the northern extent of their ranges, the climate also allows many imported plants to thrive. Nearly any houseplant known to commerce and most landscape plants of the South can thrive in the Keys climate. Some exotic species, which arrived as landscape plants, now invade and threaten natural areas. The native flora of the Keys is diverse, including members of both temperate families such as red maple, slash pine, and oaks, growing at the southern end of their ranges, and tropical families, including mahogany, gumbo limbo, stoppers, Jamaican dogwood, and many others, which grow only in tropical climates. Several types of palms are native to the Florida Keys, including the Florida thatch palm, which grows to its greatest size in Florida on the islands of the Keys. The Keys are also home to unique animal species, including the American crocodile, key deer, protected by the National Key Deer Refuge and the Key Largo Wood Rat. The Keys is the northernmost range of the American crocodile, which is endemic from South America to Panama, north to the Florida Keys. The Key Largo Wood Rat is found only in the northern part of its namesake island and is a focus of management activities in Crocodile Lake Wildlife Refuge, about 70 miles. 110 kilometers west of Key West is Dry Tortugas National Park, one of the most isolated and therefore well-preserved in the world. The waters surrounding the Keys are part of a protected area known as the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. Let's talk about climate of the Florida Keys. The climate of the Florida Keys is tropical savanna. Other than some areas of coastal Miami, the Florida Keys are the only areas in the continental United States to never report freezing temperatures since settlement. The record low in Key West is 41 degrees Fahrenheit, or 5 degrees Celsius, in both 1886 and 1981, and low temperatures below 48 degrees Fahrenheit, 8.9 degrees Celsius, are rare. Most of the Florida Keys fall into USDA zone. 11A to 11B. There are two main, quote, seasons in the Florida Keys, a hot and wet season from June through October and a dry season from November through April that features little rainfall, sunny skies, and warm, breezy conditions. The warm and sunny winter climate with average highs in the middle 70s and lows above 60 is the main tourist season 
in the Florida Keys. Key West is the driest city in Florida, and most of the Florida Keys can become quite dry at the height of the dry season. Some of the more exposed vegetation in the Keys is scrub, stunted due to the intense sun, quick draining sandy oil, and arid winter climate. Going further into weather in the Florida Keys, let's talk about the tropical cyclones. The Keys are occasionally threatened by tropical storms and hurricanes, leading to evacuations to the mainland. Hurricane George, after destroying much of the housing and infrastructure on many of the Caribbean islands, caused damage and extensive flooding in the Lower Keys in 1998 before making landfall in Mississippi. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina, Rita, and Wilma affected the Keys, although none made a direct hit, causing widespread damage and flooding. The most severe hurricane to hit the area was the Labor Day hurricane of 1935, a Category 5 hurricane. Tropical cyclones present special dangers and challenges to the entire Keys because no area of the islands is more than 20 feet or 6.1 meters above sea level, and many are only a few feet elevation, and water surrounds the islands. Nearly every neighborhood is subject to flooding, as well as hurricane winds. In response, many homes in the Keys are built on concrete stilts, with the first floor being not legally habitable and enclosed by breakaway walls that are not strongly attached to the rest of the house. Nonetheless, Monroe County, as reported in the Federal Register, has estimated that there are between 8,000 and 12,000 illegal enclosures inhabited by people. Because of the threat from storm surge, evacuations are routinely ordered when the National Weather Service issues hurricane watch or warning and are sometimes ordered for a tropical storm warning. Evacuation of the Keys depends on causeways and the two-lane highway to the mainland. Time estimates for evacuating the entire Keys range from 12 to 24 hours. Evacuation estimates are significant in the emergency planning, of course, but also because they are a factor in local and state regulations for controlling development. The building permit allocation was increased in 2005 when local governments reduced estimates for evacuation. On September 10, 2017, Hurricane Irma made landfall in Kajo Key. The storm destroyed an estimated 25% of the houses on the Keys and another 65% suffered major damage. Most residents had evacuated before the storm hit the area. On September 12th, parts of the Keys were still inaccessible by causeway, and some areas were closed to the public. Governor Rick Scott reported devastation. Most areas were without power or water. The damage was the worst in the Lower Keys, though less severe in Key West. Parts of the Lower Keys may be uninhabitable for months. All right, I'm not going to name all of the major islands, but I'll name some of the major islands. On U.S. Highway 1, the Overseas Highway, it runs over most of the inhabited islands of the Florida Keys. The islands are listed in order from southwest to north. Mile markers are listed for keys that the Overseas Highway runs across or near. You got the Dry Tortugas, uh, Marquesas, Sunset Key, Key West is mile marker 0 through 4, Fleming Key, Sigsby Park, that's about uh, mile marker 2 and 3 quarters off to the north there, Stock Island, mile marker 5, Raccoon Key, mile marker 5 and a quarter, uh, Boca Chica is mile marker 7 and 8, Rockland Key, mile marker 9, East Rockland Key, is mile marker 9 and a half, Big Coppet at 10, uh, skipping forward, Lower Sugarloaf, is at mile marker 17. Sugarloaf Key is mile marker 19 through 20th. Kujo Key is uh, tw mile marker 21 through 23. Summerlin Key, mile marker 24 to 25. Ramrod Key, my grandparents had a place there, mile marker 27. Uh, Middle Torch and Big Torch Key is about uh, mile marker 27 
and three quarters or so. Little Torch, Big Pine, No Name Key, Scout Key, Bay of Honda Key, Great Beach. Uh, that's uh, 37, mile marker 37 to 38. Ohio Key, Missouri Key, Little Duck Key, uh, mile marker 39. The Seven Mile Bridge is uh, about from 40 to 46, and it separates the lower keys from the middle keys. You got Pigeon Key, that's right off the bridge there. Knight's Key, Vaca Key, Fat Deer Key. Let's see, Grassy Key, it's at mile marker 58 through 60. Duck Key, Conk Key. Conk Key is about mile marker 62 and 63. Uh, let's see, the Long Key Bridge is about mile marker 63 to 65. You got Long Key, Fiesta Key. Moving up into the the northern keys is uh, Lower Matacumbia, about mile marker 74 through 77. Uh, that one also holds. Holiday Isle and Isla Mirada, uh, uh, Florida. That's the uh, the famous Tiki Bar. I used to work there when I was younger as a security guard. And let's see, Indian Key Phil. Uh, let's see, Plantation Key, mile marker 86 through 90. And then uh, my old home of Key Largo from 90, mile marker 91 through mile marker 107. Yes. And then Cross Key is from mile marker 109 through mile marker. 112 and that's at the top of the key cross key um is that where i guess that that must be where ocean reef is there's some million dollar homes there uh, and <laughs> we always thought of that as the the rich the richy area of the keys but uh, pretty much every part of the keys um uh, it's pretty expensive to live down there in comparison with the rest of the of the state and even the country uh so Yes, I miss Key Largo, and this is making me a little bit homesick. <laughs> Transportation. Uh, let's go back into it. The main chain of Keys Islands can be traveled by motor vehicles on the overseas highway, 127 mile or 204 kilometer section of US 1, which runs from Key West to Fort Kent, Maine, in its entirety. The highway was built. Parallel to the original route of the Overseas Railway, which was not rebuilt following the Labor Day hurricane of 1935, even before the hurricane, the road sections and highway bridges allowed automobile traffic to travel from Miami to Lower Matacombe Key, where a car ferry connected with another roadway section through the Lower Keys. Following the hurricane, some of the original railway bridges were converted to carry the highway roadbeds. These bridges were used until the 1980s when new highway bridges were built alongside. Many of the original railroad and highway bridges remain today as pedestrian fishing piers. In addition to that transportation by car, uh, there is some public transportation. They have a public bus transportation system of some kind. It's not incredibly used but uh, you can get from place to place using the bus there are some road hazards despite this reconstruction us1 was not widened on a large scale and today most of the route consists of just two lanes due to their tropical climate the florida keys attract several hundred thousand tourists annually while some visitors arrive via key west international airport and florida keys Marathon Airport in Marathon, cruise ship or ferry from Miami, Fort Myers, or Marco Island, Florida, the vast majority of tourists drive down from the mainland on US-1. This influx of traffic, coupled with the two-lane nature of US-1 through most of its length in the Keys, and the fact that no alternative road routes are available, mean that Monroe County has the highest per capita rate fatal automobile accidents in the state of florida culture and recreation major industries are fishing and tourism including ecotourism with many visitors scuba diving in the area's protected waters a ferry now takes riders between key west and fort myers as well as marco island due north on the mainland along the western edge of florida bay there is some dark skies recreation in the Florida Keys. 
middle and lower Florida Keys are among a few remaining South Florida dark skies locations accessible by car, thanks to their position along the Atlantic Ocean, and therefore with southern skies unobstructed by light pollution associated with urban development. Scout Key is home to Winter Star Party, a prominent annual amateur astronomy event in the United States, and one of the top 10 star parties in the world, according to BBC Sky at Night. It is an international gathering that attracts 500 plus people each year who enjoy stargazing, astrophotography, and Milky Way photography. Bayah Honda State Park is a well-known dark skies location among locals offering unobstructed views of the southern night sky year-round. It also hosts amateur astronomy gatherings. That's a little bit about the Florida Keys. I'm sure there's much, much more that you can find at your local library. (laughs) That's it for this edition of What Makes You Smarter. Thank you so much for sticking around and listening to me dribble on about my life in the Florida Keys. I was a firefighter down there from 1989 to 1999 with a little break in the middle when I lived in Orlando. But uh, yeah, I had a great time in the Florida Keys, my my life down there. And then, you know, also I was DJing down there as well. So I, I did do that from 89 to whew, probably 2008. I guess the middle of 2009 is when I moved to Arkansas. So I, I got to DJ a lot of parties down there, and a lot of weddings. A lot of destination weddings in the Florida Keys. That's another uh, great thing about the Florida Keys. A lot of people do destination parties and weddings and have people just travel and have a little vacay while they're they're having a wedding. So, yeah, I had a lot of great wedding experience down there. And I still do weddings. Uh, I'm not giving it up. (laughs) If you want to have a wedding with me, please. Why don't you? Oh, that's it. I've dribbled on enough about Florida Keys. Now I'm dreaming about the ocean. but. and, you know, I'm still enjoying myself here in Arkansas, and there's some nice people here. There's people everywhere that are so cool. Uh, I remember in the Florida Keys, when I moved there from Miami in 88, it was a, a, a tiny bit of a culture shock because Miami, a lot of people, you know, there's there's millions of people living together, so they, they keep to themselves generally. But then when you get to the Florida Keys, there, there was only about 10,000 people on the island of Key Largo. so. And there's really only two grocery stores. You had the Publix and the Winn-Dixie. So out of those two grocery stores, you're going to meet everybody on the island at one point or another. And the only uh, big department store to to shop at was the Kmart. And I don't know if it's still down there. Because I know Kmart just recently closed many of their stores, if not all of their stores. So the Florida Keys may not even have a gigantic uh, department store to, to shop at. So I guess that keeps it local. I know in Florida City, just a, a few, uh, about 20 miles north of Key Largo, there's the uh, the Walmart. So you do have that to do your major shopping. <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, the Florida Keys. I am Keys Dan. I will keep that moniker, even though I'm living in Arkansas now. Uh, that's it for this edition of What Makes You Smarter. This has been Keys Dan. From RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. If you like what you hear, I encourage you to follow What Makes You Smarter on social media. Find it on Facebook at What Makes You Smarter, Instagram at What Makes You Smarter, Twitter at Smarter What, and YouTube. Username Keys Dan. Leave What Makes You Smarter podcast a review and subscribe. Listen to What Makes You Smarter podcast on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and Podcast Addict. My personal favorite? Learn with me on my podcast, What Makes You Smarter. And if you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to check out my other podcast, What Makes You Famous. Find it everywhere using the hashtag, What Makes You Famous. Call 501-470-6386. And leave a message to set up a time for What Makes You Famous. Support What Makes You Smarter podcast using the PayPal, paypal.me 
forward slash keys dan email info at radio what.com what makes you smarter is a production of keys dan enterprises incorporated at keys dan.com thank you for listening thank you for listening thank you for listening